Since 1976, Black History Month has been celebrated in the U.S. in February. President Gerald Ford officially ushered in the annual event that year, encouraging Americans to join him in tribute to Black History Month and the message of courage and perseverance it brings to all of us. Furthermore, in his message to the nation, Ford recognized the efforts of Dr. Carter G. Woodson. But who exactly was he? And what did he have to play in the recognition of black people's achievements throughout the centuries? Woodson's story starts in 1875. When he was born of one of seven children to one-time slaves, Eliza and James Riddle Woodson. James relocated his family to West Virginia upon discovering that a high school for black children was being established in the city of Huntington. Unfortunately, though, Woodson's family were unable to afford to send him to be educated in his youth. So during his childhood, Woodson went into mining and sharecropping as a means to help support his family. He was an autodidact, however, and managed to learn the basics of typical school subjects himself by 17. Then when Woodson was almost in his 20s, he finally enrolled at Douglas High School. Impressively, Woodson graduated from what should have been a four-year program of study in half that time. He would later become a teacher before earning bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of Chicago. After that, Woodson entered the hallowed corridors of Harvard University. In 1912, he left the Ivy League institution with a doctoral degree and became the second black student ever to do so at W.E.B. Du Bois. Then, in 1915, Woodson made his way to Chicago to take part in the National Half-Century Anniversary Exposition and Lincoln Jubilee, an event commemorating 50 years since the abolition of slavery. Thousands of African Americans celebrated at one of the city's Coliseum buildings, while exhibits at the location showed off black people's many accomplishments after emancipation. Moved by the event, Woodson decided that he wanted to do more to loud the history and heritage of black people in America. While still in Chicago then, he founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. Then the following year, Woodson began publishing the Journal of Negro History which brought to light the lives and stories of the black community in the U.S. And Woodson believed that African Americans weren't learning enough about what their forefathers had done in the past, nor did they understand much about their roots. To try and change this then, he reached out to his one-time fraternity, Omega Psi Phi. The fraternity in turn began its own Negro History and Literature Week event in 1924. For Woodson, though, this wasn't enough. He wanted a bigger, more widespread celebration. To this end, in February 1926, he distributed a press release that heralded the inaugural Negro History Week. And the month in which the occasion took place was significant too. Since both Abraham Lincoln's and Frederick Douglass's birthdays were in February, something of which Woodson was well aware. What's more, Negro History Week was a roaring success, with schools and associations throughout the U.S. getting on board, so much so in fact that the ASNLH found itself failing to cope with the demand for its instructional materials. And the ASNLH itself would grow, with outposts being formed across the nation, although its headquarters would continue to be located at Woodson's home in Washington, D.C. But Woodson's achievements didn't end there. He also established the Associated Publishers Press and founded the Negro History Bulletin, the latter of which was intended to help teachers of elementary and high school students. He was a prolific author, too, having produced in excess of 30 books during his lifetime. However, arguably Woodson's most famous written work is The Miseducation of the Negro, which was first published in 1933. In it, Woodson asserts that African Americans have been conditioned from a young age to accept a lesser standing in society. He thus encourages readers to learn for themselves and make their own paths in the world. The book remains a staple of college courses today. Furthermore, Negro History Week was still popular in the 1940s. In fact, some pushed for an event that would take place over more than just seven days. And by the end of the decade, the celebration was indeed bigger and longer in certain parts of the U.S. Woodson wouldn't live to see black history being officially commemorated for a whole month, however, as in 1950, he passed away of a heart attack. But of course, Woodson hadn't been forgotten. And he isn't only commemorated through the continued success of Black History Month. The University of Virginia has paid tribute to the author and historian through its Carter G. Woodson Institute for African American and African Studies, for example. A museum named after Woodson was established in St. Petersburg, Florida. And naturally, Negro History Week didn't die out. 
In fact, as the 1960s rolled around and the civil rights movement hit its stride, black history and black heritage were pushed even more to the forefront of the national consciousness. What's more, in 1969, students and teachers at Kent State University formulated plans for a campus-wide Black History Month event. The first such celebration would occur the following year. Then in 1976, President Ford would bring Black History Month to nationwide attention, the first American leader to officially do so. His successors have continued to commemorate the occasion too, with Presidents Obama and Trump in particular holding events at the White House in honor of Black History. But Black History Month doesn't just take place in the US. The celebration was adopted by the UK in 1987 and has been commemorated ever since, for instance. Then in 1995, Black History Month was formally recognized by the Canadian House of Commons. It wasn't until 2008, however, that the country's Senate did the same. Nevertheless, despite Black History Month's continued popularity, discussions continue over its efficacy and relevance. It's been argued, for instance, that the occasion may prevent black history from being taught throughout the year rather than solely during the month of February. And one of Black History Month's most prominent critics is none other than Morgan Freeman. In a 2005 interview for 60 Minutes, the actor deemed the very concept as ridiculous. He added, I don't want a Black History Month. Black history is American history. Unfortunately, though, this may not be the case in some American educational institutions. In 2015, for instance, the Washington Post reported that public schools in Texas would downplay the relevance of slavery to the American Civil War. That same year, a ninth grader discovered that a caption in one of his geography textbooks had deemed slaves were merely workers. While African Americans' lives and achievements are still marginalized in certain quarters then, Black History Month is still valuable. And it's likely that Woodson himself would have been proud of how far the celebrations come, not to mention how much it means to so many people.